Welcome to How To Plant Base, where we teach you how to use and create plant-based basics. Today is episode four. Don't know why I'm using both hands, but we are talking about all things pumpkin. It is pumpkin season for many of us, but before you go grab that can of pumpkin puree, let's talk about all things pumpkin. So first, to get it out of the way, pumpkins are fruits, not vegetables. And before you go hurting the messenger, I am just relaying it. I did not make the rules. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what part of the pumpkin is edible. Technically, it is everything. Yes, the skin is edible. Yes, the stems are edible, sort of. And yes, even the big jack-o'-lanterns are edible. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that pumpkins are grown outside and they also are handled by a lot of people. You've seen people digging through those pumpkin bins in the store, so they need to be thoroughly washed with soap every single time before, especially if you are planning to eat the skin. As far as the stems being edible, um, they're technically only edible when they are still green on the vine. So if you happen to be growing your own pumpkins and you notice that one of your pumpkins really aren't growing that much and your vines are still good, you can cut those off and throw them into like a stir fry or saute them in some type of way and they are completely edible. Um, once they turn brown, there's really not nothing that you can do with them or they're hardened like what you get in the store. Um, pumpkin can also be eaten raw so um, it's definitely a personal preference it's similar to like if somebody likes raw broccoli versus not liking raw broccoli but it is completely edible raw and there are more health benefits to eating raw pumpkin versus cooking it one more quick tidbit before we get into the types of pumpkins is that pumpkins are very low in calories they are high in vitamins and antioxidants especially vitamin A and beta carotene um, and so they are also typically only in stores in season so they are usually on sale so stores can move through them faster which makes them great for your budget as well now let's talk about our types of pumpkins there are over 150 varieties of pumpkins across the world and I am sure that no one including myself wants to do a 40-day video so we are going to focus on the top three that you see in the stores inside of the US most often so most recognizable is a jack-o-lantern pumpkin or a carving pumpkin is what many people use them for they are completely edible um, as long as you do not carve them or paint them so if you haven't done any of those maybe you found them on sale the day after Halloween when stores are really like get these out of here then um, um, you can completely eat these. One really important thing to note is that the bigger the pumpkin is, uh, the more watery the pumpkin flesh will taste. And also jack-o'-lanterns have a very stringier texture to the flesh of the pumpkin versus some of the smaller ones. So definitely keep that in mind. It's good for things like chili or something that can simmer for a really long time um, and take on a lot more flavor since it is more watered down. Next up, we have these cute little guys. They are most commonly known as Jack B. Little Pumpkin and for the most part inside of the US they are only used for decorating um, however they are also completely edible if you cut the top of it off right here scoop out the seeds and cook it until soft um, they make the cutest little vessel for adding th things like soups or dips and then if you are having a Thanksgiving or another fall party they are a super cute centerpiece for whatever meal you are serving and then what we have last is our sugar pie not sugar pie, sugar pumpkin or pie pumpkin, not together. Depending on the store that you are shopping at, they can be interchangeable in name, but if you are wanting to eat a pumpkin, this is a variety that you most often wanna go for. And it's not just if you're making a pie, although it is perfect for that. Um, if you are roasting them to make a fall veggie tray or just even eat by itself just to roast it, um, these are what you really wanna be looking for inside of a store. Okay, so let's talk about how you pick the perfect pumpkin, whether you are carving it or you are wanting to eat it, there are a couple things that you want to look for. But a really cool fact is that pumpkins, if stored in a cool and dry place, can last for up to a year. So they are the perfect produce that won't spoil very quickly, making them great to have all year round if you need them to be. If you are inside of a store, what you first want to look for is firmness. You want to be able to push in on the pumpkin, especially in three places, and it be firm to your touch. So you want to make sure up here around the stem that it is firm, that there's no soft or mushy places you also want the same thing down here at the bottom especially where the vine was attached to it and then lastly where your pumpkin um, visually rested on the ground before being picked um, you can see it in some of the other ones a little bit better um, like this you uh, want to make sure that that space also isn't soft 
The next thing that you want to check for is that your stem has a little bit of green to it or it is completely green. A green stem means that it was picked more recently, so it is fresher, especially if you're going to be eating it. If it is brown, that means it has been sitting in a warehouse for a long time or it was picked longer. Um, you don't want that, especially if you're planning to eat it. If you are using it for carving, it's not as bad, but it does mean that it has the ability to spoil a little bit faster. It may not last you the whole season um, if you carved or even just painted it. From this point on, I am going to solely be focusing on the sugar or the pie pumpkin because we are talking about eating the rest of the video. Um, we are going to be talking about cutting them. If you do want to cut one of the smaller ones to use as that like vessel for soup or something or the jack-o-lanterns, you ideally really want to use a serrated knife and go in at an angle all around and then pull the top off that way. That's the easiest thing to do. Since we're not worried about um, keeping the stem or the top intact like to put on top of the soup or to put on top of our jack-o-lantern um, and the stem is not edible at this point what we are going to do is cut off the top of this squashes and other winter things can be a little bit hard the best thing you can do is use a sharp knife a dull knife has a much higher risk of cutting um, it also doesn't help that it is round so you really need to be careful one quick tip that you can do is turn it every so often so that you're cutting through more of it. I also just want to say that these have thoroughly been washed. I don't have a sink right here, so I can't show you, but promise they have been washed. So as you can see, I didn't take off enough that um, you can actually see through the middle of it because we don't need to do that. You just need to take enough off that the stem is coming off. So if you are using this to puree it, you really don't need to do anything more than cutting this in half just like this again you can rock it back and forth a little bit um, just be careful over everything else so now what we have inside is our stringy flesh as well as our seeds so what we are going to do with that is we're going to grab a bowl and a spoon any standard spoon will work and you are just going to work the side of your spoon against uh, that pumpkin that you are using and get out as much as you can being very careful that you don't take off too much of the flesh you really just want to focus on the stringy parts and the seeds really cool fact is that the pumpkin um, each pumpkin has approximately 500 seeds so if you want you can Take a couple of those and dry them out and save for next year if you have space and try to grow your own pumpkins. It's okay if you have a little bit of stringiness here, you can take out a little bit more of it until it looks smoother. But again, try not to take out the actual flesh part if once you stop seeing a lot of stringy pieces. Now we are not going to throw away our stringy pieces and seeds. We are going to save that for later. But I did wanna show you, so again, if you're just roasting this to make pumpkin puree, you don't need to do anything else as far as cutting wise goes. Um, if you are wanting this to roast with other veggies or you want to cube it, the best thing you can do is follow these lines that you see in the pumpkin and you can just cut right along those lines. And then after you cut two of them, you will get a shape like this. You can either cube this from here literally just making cube pieces, or you can leave it in this shape and just roast this as is. Okay, so once you have a cut, depending on what you are doing with it, it is time to roast. Quick tip, you can do this with any type of winter squash, like a butternut squash or an acorn squash. Just do the exact same thing where you're scooping out the seeds and the stringy part, cutting it however you prefer, whether it's in halves or cubes, and then you're gonna roast it the same way. So. If you are using this for something sweeter, say a pie, and you're just going to puree this, again, I'm just cutting this in half. I don't recommend that you drizzle any oil or anything over this because it's going to take on the flavor of that, and we don't necessarily want our sweet desserts um, impacted by that flavor. However, what I do recommend is that you spray your pan just a little bit so it helps to prevent this sticking. If you are using something like a cubed, um, Real quick, you do wanna place this cut side down so it helps the steam stay under there and it helps it cook a little bit faster. 
If you are doing a cubed version just to eat as like a roasted vegetable side or something like that, um, I do recommend drizzling it with some oil. I'm using an olive oil. You can use another neutral oil. What oil does is help to create a richer flavor. You don't need a ton, just, you know, depending on how much you're doing, a tablespoon to two to three tablespoons at the most. Um, also, depending on what you're doing with it, you can season it. Um, I just have a pumpkin pie spice because I like those flavors that I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on. Again, you know, eyeball it depending on your taste. You can do a teaspoon for a lighter taste up to a tablespoon for a uh, deeper flavor. You can also do like barbecue seasoning, Cajun seasoning, a curry seasoning, depending on what you're going to do with it. Obviously, don't necessarily recommend putting a curry um, seasoning on something that maybe you're planning to use for dessert, but I'm also not here to judge, so do whatever you want. You are going to want to toss this together and make sure that the oil and the seasoning has touched every single piece of your pumpkin cubes. You can also do this with those slices that we made. Um, and you can also technically do this with some drizzling over here and sprinkling the season right on top like you would do like a spaghetti squash. Depending on how you cut it, it depends on how long it's going to cook for. So if you cut it in half, you are going to cook this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 50 to 60 minutes. What you're looking for is a fork to pierce through this very easily, just like you would if you were boiling potatoes and you want it to get fork tender. If you did it cubed, you are gonna cook it at the same temperature, but it's gonna be somewhere between 18 to 25 minutes, depending on how big you made your cubes. It is really important that you try to get them all uniform. If you have very small pieces and then very big pieces, they're not gonna cook evenly, and then you're gonna have ones that are mushy or ones that are not cooked whatsoever. So try to get those as uniform as possible. Okay, so while your pumpkin is roasting, you can move on to those seeds that you saved. This is a really fun activity if you have kids, most kids, really think that this is gross or kind of icky and they really like the sensory textures of all of it. So it is super beneficial to use them instead of you having to do this. If you are someone that is prone to having eczema, I highly recommend that you wear gloves in order to do this because it can irritate your skin um, from having to go through it so often. So basically what you want to do as much as possible is to just pick out the seeds. Something that I prefer to do that I can't necessarily show you right now is to add everything into a colander that has a lot of seeds. This is technically a berry colander. So if you have one of those, but um, just something, not a sieve, um, you want something that has bigger holes. You can dump all of this into here and then wash off. It will get most of the stringy bits off. But if you also see like any big clumps that don't have seeds, you can just pick those out and throw them into your compost. If you don't have a compost, you can honestly toss it outside as long as you don't live like in an apartment complex. And the squirrels will likely eat this within like two hours, if not much sooner than that, if they find it. Now we have our pumpkin seeds separated from that stringy flesh. What you wanna do now is lay them on a baking sheet as flat and thin as possible. What I really prefer to do is lay a towel down, and then you are going to spread out your seeds onto your towel. Try to get them all. If you happen to see any stringy little bits left over during this uh, process, you can just pick them out and throw them over into your colander. But really, you are just trying to get them into a thin, even layer, not really any overlap. If you are doing just like a small sugar pumpkin, you shouldn't have too much trouble if you have a large baking sheet. However, if you are doing they're on this side. If you are doing um, a jack-o'-lantern and it has a lot more seeds, you may need two trays. Or if you if you don't have two trays inside of your house, lay them as flat as possible and then every few hours stir them as much as possible. Using the towel to really try to dry them out um, themselves. You can leave these for a day or two um, to really get dried out and really take on a lot of that roasted flavor once you go to roast them. But the biggest thing here is you're just trying to get them as dry as possible. If you happen to be wondering what the difference between pumpkin seeds and pepitas are, they are both technically from pumpkins. However, pepitza seeds are from a very specific type of pumpkin um, and they do not have a shell around them. Most pumpkins do have a shell around them and what that does is actually provide a lot more fiber than what you see in pepitas. They are both very healthy for you, but this does provide a little bit more fiber. Okay, so once we have our dried pumpkin seeds, all you are going to do is get them off of this towel, and then we are going to place them inside of a bowl. 
So my easiest way to do this, make sure they're all unstuck from your towel. And then you should just be able to literally pour. A couple of them are getting stuck. <laughs> oh gosh. And then what we are going to do after that is we are going to add some oil and some maple syrup. So I'm making this a sweeter recipe, which is why I have some maple syrup inside of that. If you are not wanting it to be sweet, maybe you're making like a barbecue flavor or something like that, Cajun, um, then you don't necessarily need to add in the maple syrup. I'm also adding in some pre-made pumpkin pie spice. I'll have all the recipe measurements and everything inside of the description box so you can get the ingredient amounts and stuff like that inside of there. And then we're just gonna stir this together. You're really wanting to make sure that everything is very well coated and pretty evenly. You don't want anything that doesn't have all of that seasoning mixture and stuff on top of it. Once you have everything very well coated, you are going to lay them out onto your baking sheet. Again, you wanna to try to get this into one even layer. You are going to cook this at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 35 to 45 minutes. I find with the bigger jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, the seeds are bigger so they might take a little bit longer. With the smaller pumpkins, you're gonna uh, be on the shorter end of that time. So just get it out into a single layer as much as you possibly can. And then every 10 to 15 minutes, you are going to rotate those inside of the oven to make sure that um, they are all cooking very evenly. So into the oven this goes. Okay, so once your pumpkin seeds have completely roasted, you are going to let them cool on the baking sheet. They will be kind of crispy. Um, you can either eat them straight off of the baking sheet if you want to. If you don't wanna eat them all at one time, you just wanna store them inside of an airtight container inside of your pantry for up to two weeks. Sometimes you can get them to last four weeks, but honestly, they don't even last that long here. So just do that and then you'll have a delicious snack every single day. Okay, so once you have cooked your pumpkin, I was about to say squash, <laughs> same thing. Once you have cooked it, you should be able to easily go through it with a fork. If you cannot easily pierce through that, then it is likely not cooked yet. And if you are just roasting it with whatever seasoning you have on it, whether you use pumpkin pie spice like I did, or just like a salt and pepper, it is perfectly edible to consume right now. If you are cut, um, cutting it in half and using it as a puree, what you are going to do is flip them over. They should be very soft. You should be able to easily tell. We are not using the skin when we are pureeing it. What you're gonna do is just use a fork and get all of that out. And then, I am using a blender. You can also use a food processor. We are just going to scoop that up and place it directly inside of our blender. Depending on the blender that you have, if it cannot handle hot things, you do want to let this cool. I'm using a Vitamix, so it is perfectly okay to put somewhat hot things in there. You do, um, you can vent the lid a little bit to make sure that it doesn't pop. It just completely fell out of there. <laughs> so that was super easy. There's a little bit left in here. Just gonna throw that in as well. So for me, I just took the cap off just so there's a little bit of air being able to escape there since it is a little bit hotter. Depending on which blender or food processor you're using, you may need to add a tablespoon, no more than two tablespoons of water just to get the consistency more of a puree and softer, smoother consistency. You can of course scrape down the sides of your blender or food processor if necessary to get a smooth consistency, but when you are done, you should have a super smooth, super fine consistency just like you would find if you were opening a can of pureed pumpkin. You will notice that the color of a fresh pumpkin is a little bit lighter or a lot lighter, depending on the pumpkin that you're using, than what you would find in a pumpkin puree can. If you're gonna use this within three to five days, I recommend that you store it in an airtight container inside of your refrigerator. If you need to use it beyond five days, I recommend that you put it in a freezer safe bag or container and then store it in the freezer for up to six months. My personal preference is to put it in a freezer safe bag. That way you can completely smush it and then you can lay it flat and stack them, especially if you are making a lot of pumpkin puree 
at one time. As far as how much you get out of it, it really depends on the size of the pumpkin. As you can see with these pie pumpkins, uh, this one is slightly bigger than this one. So obviously the weight that you are going to get at the end is going to vary. Um, usually these are sold per pumpkin. So try to get the biggest one versus the smaller ones. Obviously if it is sold per pound, then you need to weigh how much you actually need. Um, for the pumpkins that I saw, they are roughly two to three pounds and you'll get about a cup to a cup and a half as just a general measurement. Pumpkins themselves are super versatile. So if you are looking for a way to use it, we have over two dozen recipes on our website. I'm gonna flash some images up here, but we have savory recipes like pasta, mac and cheese, dinner rolls, and then of course, sweet recipes like pies and cinnamon rolls and even sugar buns. So whatever you are looking for, you can find a recipe. I really hope that you loved learning about pumpkins as much as I've learned telling you everything that I know about them. If you have another seasonal ingredient that you would like me to tackle and show you how to use, leave it in a comment below, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate all of your support throughout the years on this channel and we can't wait to continue to grow with you. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.